First, I want to thank uh, the organizers uh, for inviting me to comment. Um, uh, but I will start perhaps by introducing myself. So my name is Maria Kurikkala. I'm a career diplomat and I have actually just started uh, working uh, at the Development Policy Department of the Ministry for Foreign Affairs. Uh, so I must say that it's uh, a real honor for me <laughs> to, to be a part of this qualified panel with such a short experience on taxation and development, but, but I, I hope I can bring something fresh <laughs> for this discussion. Uh, now, before I move to, to my comments, uh, I wanted to say a few words about, uh, uh, about uh, uh, the reasons why Finland is, uh, is involved uh, uh, in this sector, taxation and development, um, and uh, what are our priorities uh, in this sector. Um, first of all, um, what is quite interesting is that the, the that Finnish uh, tax system seems to be very efficient and performant because the fiscal deficits uh, here in Finland uh, is, uh, is one of the smallest in the world. And uh, I, I guess also politicians have, so, have done something right because the willingness to pay taxes is very high here in Finland. So, so almost 80% of, of the Finns are so-called happy taxpayers. And I believe that the reason for this is that people see the benefit of paying taxes, uh, schools, hospitals, and so on. But uh, another factor might also be that, that, uh, that the system is very transparent and you can get easily information about how, how, how your, um, the, the, the taxes you have paid uh, have been used. So it, it, it's not a surprise that one of the out of four uh, priorities of the Finnish development policies to strengthen democratic and effective societies and, and strengthening the tax base in developing countries is an important element of this work. Uh, it is perhaps also worth mentioning that in 2015, uh, uh, Finland, together with other, other donors, committed to doubling its support uh, for developing countries' domestic resource mobilization by, by 2020. And this was in the context of Addis Tax Initiative. Um, against this background, uh, it, it, it is quite logical that, that, that we try to do our share of the work to help developing countries to, to strengthen their systems uh, together with, with excellent partners like, like uh, you and wider. And um, we, uh, our government actually drafted, uh, drafted uh, some years ago uh, uh, an action program uh, to do this. So, uh, and, and this program is for the years 2016 and 2019. And I have highlighted two objectives uh, that are particularly interesting and relevant uh, in today's discussion. Um, so, uh, especially the, the, the objective two, um, uh, the need to strengthen developing countries' taxation capacity, uh, and uh, the objective four, uh, need to support research, are relevant. Uh, the, the fourth one, especially because we, we really believe that, that, uh, that all political decisions, whether they are taken at international level, let's say international tax rules, or at national level, uh, for example, national fiscal policies uh, uh, need to be based on, on as good and as re reliable information as possible. So it's quite clear that, that UN Wider's work that we are now discussing fits really well into our development policy objectives. So, well, this was what I wanted to do tell you about, uh, about uh, let's say, uh, the, uh, the background of, of, of the Finnish, Finnish uh, policies in this sector. But I also want to mention to you a couple of uh, starting points uh, that are very important for us. Uh, first of all, we, we believe that, that we need comprehensive approach because, well, it's not only about collecting more taxes, but it's also uh, about good institutions, good governance, uh, 
and, uh, and responsible use of the resources that are collected. And uh, I, I believe that research has, has, has a key role to play in this because, uh, because we uh, really need uh, information on how, how the money that, uh, that, that has been collected is used. Uh, and I already mentioned that, that uh, evidence-based decisions are, are key. Well, I, I will now go to, to my comments, uh, and uh, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation about, about them, um, uh, but, but I will just uh, run them through as quickly as possible so that we will have uh, time for discussions. And uh, you know that I am not an academic, so uh, I'm not going to comment uh, the scientific or methodological issues of the presentations. I will leave that to, to the researchers who, who are in the audience, who are more qualified to do that than me. Uh, so I came with the view of, of, of a donor. And uh, so my, my points are pro probably slightly more political ones. I was actually asked uh, to tell you about, uh, about uh, donors' uh, knowledge needs. And I don't probably need to repeat why tax data is so important. It, it does really have a, ha, have a lot of uh, potential um, also for improving policy making. And I must say that as a donor, I was very happy to read that, that uh, uh, that the data itself already exists, uh, that, that in Africa tax uh, and revenue authorities collect a lot of data um, on individuals and firms, uh, but this data is not, not used. Uh, and um, so, so it's extremely positive that, that, uh, that this data already exists and can be made available uh, according to what I've heard at a reasonable cost, <laughs> which is always positive uh, for, for a donor. Um, well, we have also heard uh, about the problems of data quality and, and all the challenges that are related to that. Uh, so I, 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 I'm not going to go to that. But I go back to the donor's knowledge needs. Well, these needs are, are of course, great because uh, there's not much uh, scientific research and evidence, it seems, uh, about the impact of taxes in developing countries, uh, the type of information that decision makers could, could use when they make, uh, make decisions on, on fiscal policy. And you might, might be aware that, that the hot topic uh, right now, uh, especially at the EU level, is how to strengthen economic growth that is sustainable and, and creates jobs. Uh, especially in Africa. And I believe that there's a continuing need for systematic and, and clear uh, information about the impact of government's fiscal policies um, to, to, to issues like foreign investments, job creation, uh, local companies, uh, in part particular the SMEs that, that create a lot of, lot of jobs. Uh, the second issue, and this is of course linked uh, to the first one, uh, the job creation, so how the taxes are, that, that are collected are used to reduce uh, inequalities. What kind of impact do they really have uh, on, on people? And uh, we are now in Finland, so I have to mention especially on women. Uh, and this was quite poorly discussed already yesterday in yesterday's panel on, on tax and benefit policies. Uh, it was really interesting. Um, lastly, about information needs, uh, the GRD as well as Ugandan and South African cases can, can probably produce useful information uh, uh, for addressing illicit financial flows. Uh, you already mentioned tax uh, avoidance, so some numbers can be quite revealing and um, also uh, all the information we can we can have uh, that is related to national resources uh, is is uh, of course extremely valuable for for a donor uh, then uh, just a couple of uh, let's say broader broader 
comments uh, about the, the, the three presentations. Um, but I found uh, also extremely uh, valuable and interesting was the, the, the strong capacity building component uh, of, of these projects. Um, it seemed to me that, that uh, uh, capacity building is, is some kind of built-in feature of this project because um, in addition to training activities, uh, the, the, the cooperation between international and local experts is, is, is so, so um, um, close. And um, so, so the work that is conducted in joint teams um, consists uh, both, both local experts and international experts. And so I believe it's a learning experience for, for all of them. Uh, then the issue of ownership. <laughs> Uh, it was uh, quite clear, we, we could all hear that the commitment from the Ugandan revenue authorities was very strong. But my question is uh, uh, also, uh, how, uh, how big is the ownership of the political decision makers to use this information? Because that will be the, the determining point uh, on how we receive the real impact on the ground. And if you have any, uh, any uh, thoughts about this, uh, I would be very interested in hearing also about the GRD, how, how the developing countries' uh, governments um, uh, have reacted to that. Are they, they interested in, in using, using that, that information? Um, uh, then, uh, last, I think this is my last point. Uh, what was also very interesting for a donor uh, was the, the, the idea to use Uganda and South Africa as examples for, for other African and uh, developing countries. And, and well, GRD also has a role to play, play in this. Uh, I, I believe it's very important to put emphasis to the comparability of, of data. I heard that there are a lot of challenges uh, in, in, in this as well, but, but uh, happy to, 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 to hear more about, about these issues uh, in the discussion, if possible. Thank you.